I love my country. And sure, I get it. Everyone says that. It's easy. But I like to think I do my part to prove it. Some days, you work harder than others. Today on the Comic Book Report, Captain America by Nick Spencer Omnibus, Volume 1. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And right now I'm going back into the world of Captain America, finally kicking off the Nick Spencer run. This is a book I've really wanted to check out for some time, and I'm so happy I get to review this omnibus today. But before we dive in, I just want to say a thank you to our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're looking for collected editions, I always recommend you checking out their website first. You can use my code, the Comic Book Report, at checkout to receive two dollars off of your order today. Please note if you use my affiliate code or link to make a purchase, I will receive a small commission. But it's a great way to support our channel. Channel. Thank you for considering. Now on with the show. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written primarily by Nick Spencer and illustrated primarily by Daniel Acuna and Angel Unzueta. The comics in this omnibus were first published by Marvel Comics beginning in 2015. The volume itself collects Captain America, Sam Wilson, issues 1 through 17. Captain America, Steve Rogers, issues 1 through 11. Avengers Standoff, Welcome to Pleasant Hill. Avengers Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill Alpha. Avengers Standoff, Assault on Pleasant Hill Omega. Civil War II, The Oath and material from Free Comic Book Day 2016, Captain America. And finally, this oversized hardcover edition comes in at 888 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that omnibus edition from Marvel Comics. I am happy to report that this is a glossy paper stock, sewn binding, oversized format. And I do want to note that this is the direct market cover for this omnibus. There is also a standard edition, which I will go ahead and show a snippet of so you can compare the two. I was really happy with this direct market cover. I like the more realistic look of the art. I like seeing Sam Wilson, Steve Rogers, and Bucky all on the cover. Really, really nice touch. Such a fun edition. The back cover of the dust jacket as well looks very sleek. I like the star design logo. Everything just looks really clean and crisp. Really, really enjoyed the dust jacket design overall. And speaking of that dust jacket design, we are going to take one more quick look at it, including the interior flaps of this dust jacket, just so you can get an idea of what this whole thing looks like. Again, this is the direct market cover. I already showed you what the standard edition cover looks like for this omnibus. I believe that omnibus might also have a different picture on the spine, so definitely seek that out if you're looking to see what that looks like. Otherwise, these editions are identical as far as I know. Both covers are really nice, but I just prefer this one myself. As far as the Under the Dust Jacket artwork for this book, we do have a Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson Captain America's kind of face off printed on this book in a nice wraparound cover, all with the kind of blue lens over the top, I would say. It's this blue design. Really interesting Under the Dust Jacket artwork. I do like that it's a wraparound, but I am surprised at the image they picked. And now here I'll give you a look at the spread so you can see the art they stamped on this hardcover edition. Very cool, nice touch, happy to see it on a modern omnibus as always, very cool. And finally, before we dive into the collection proper, I do want to take a look at that sewn binding. I'm happy with this binding overall. I really have no complaints here. There is a little bit of gutter loss, but I think a little bit is to be expected. You'll see as I flip through the video so you can judge for yourself. But I just, again, wanted all the collectors out there to get an idea of what you can expect from the binding. 
And now let's go ahead and jump into the book proper. I will say I like the design of the book, very clean. We have a nice title page. There isn't really a proper table of contents. I've noticed with a lot of these modern omnibuses, particularly from Marvel, what we have instead is sort of a creator attribution page that shows us the breakdown of which creators we have on which issues. And usually that list of creator issues is kind of mapped in the order of the issues in the book. So it is a kind of table of contents based on the book's mapping but I would have preferred to see an issue-by-issue issue kind of page-numbered standard table of contents. But again, I'm seeing more of this in a lot of these modern Marvel omnibuses. I know House of M omnibus, I think, had a table of contents similar to this. It's not a huge deal-breaker, but again, I love seeing a page number, so it's just easier to index the issues. But still happy we have that kind of mapping creator list at the front, really helpful overall. Uh, as far as this book goes, it's really divided up between two basic runs here. We have the Sam Wilson Captain America run and the Steve Rogers Captain America run. Now, it does start primarily with Sam Wilson, and then eventually Steve Rogers issues sprinkle in, kind of braid in between back and forth. And in the midst of that, we also have things like the Pleasant Hill uh, issues. We have the, uh, the Civil War Oath at the very end, and a couple other little miscellaneous uh, issues there. Uh, but overall, you're really looking at that Sam Wilson series and that Steve Rogers Captain America series. And overall, I really like that. I feel like both of the series were really distinct. They had their own vibe, feeling, and even central characters. And I think that that was really to this book's strength. It felt like we had a lot of variety amongst the two Captain Americas we see within this book. Uh, in that way, it kind of reminded me of the uh, Fantastic Four Omnibus by Matt Fraction that split duties between Fantastic Four four and ff i did review that at one point on the channel uh, but it's really similar to that in my mind it might even be more cohesive and unified as oftentimes the characters and things kind of overlap between these captain america books uh, but it's a lot of fun. So like I said, we start with Sam Wilson's Captain America, and right from the jump, this was a fun way to start for me. I am still making my way through the Rick Remender era of Captain America, and I have not yet gotten to the point where Sam Wilson actually takes on the shield and takes over duties as Captain America. So diving into Nick Spencer's run, this is my first time reading a Sam Wilson Captain America. And overall, it left a really great impression with me. I think that Sam Wilson, he might be a little more outspoken politically and his ideologies are a little bit different and how he approaches the mantle of Captain America is quite a bit different and some of that is due to his race and his race relations with the country he's serving and protecting uh, but I think that that was really fascinating and I think it was handled really well and I found myself pretty captivated especially in the early run as I was just trying to get adjusted to this new or newer to me, Captain America. I always liked Sam Wilson as the Falcon with what I've read in the past, and I really enjoyed the incarnation I've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, especially the uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, where we see him taking on the mantle of Captain America, so I knew I wanted to read some issues that had the proper Sam Wilson Captain America. And really, it doesn't disappoint. Those issues in the beginning are a ton of fun. We have Sam Wilson, and he's being assisted by characters like Misty Knight, which was a really fun thing to see. The two of them were kind of on these different missions. We also have him getting a uh, sidekick in his own Falcon that shows up, Joaquin Torres. He becomes a really prevalent character throughout this run, and his whole origin was really interesting, and I think that that character really added a lot of levity and fun to this overall run from Nick Spencer. A really great addition to the cast, and it really, like I said, kind of livened up some of those issues. I think with the Steve Rogers stuff, he really becomes more prevalent after the events of the Pleasant Hill uh, story arc, which I should probably talk about first. Uh, the Pleasant Hill story in this collection is one of my favorites in the whole omnibus. Basically, we have a character wake up where we kind of assume it's Bucky Barnes' Winter Soldier, but we don't know that conclusively. We basically have this character waking up in this town. Everything's a bit off. He has amnesia. He's getting flashes of memories that he's not sure if they're his or what's even going on. We find that a lot of people are in a similar position only to eventually uncover the truth about this Pleasant Hills uh, city, which is that this is kind of a prison facility, and all of the populace here are either S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that are kind of serving as prison guards, or they are criminals, some of the world's biggest supervillains who have been uh, brainwashed and physically transformed into believing they're just random citizens of this town. 
As you may guess, things go awry. The supervillain citizens kind of remember who they are. Some of them transform back into their true selves. Around this time, both Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers are investigating Pleasant Hill, uh, along with Bucky Barnes. We find that this whole effort is sort of an overreach from Maria Hill, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and there's a lot of just intense battles that occur. We find out that this whole facility and the technology and what's making this all happen all hinges on this character named Kobik, who is actually the uh, physical representation of fragments of a cosmic cube that have kind of reconstituted themselves into the identity of a young girl. I know, it's really, really wild. Such a fascinating concept and an interesting thing to do with the cosmic cubes in the Marvel Universe. At any rate, this little girl is scared, trying to help people by creating this grand illusion. Um, this ultimately leads to Steve Rogers in a really epic fight with Crossbones. The Steve Rogers we have at the beginning of this omnibus is still the old man Steve Rogers, who no longer has the super soldier serum in his system and who has aged appropriately. At any rate, this Steve Rogers is fighting with Crossbones, and it's not looking good. But of course, Steve Rogers is fighting to the mat, giving it all he has. And at this point, Kobik, the manifestation of the Cosmic Cube, intervenes and restores Steve Rogers to his youth with the Super Soldier Serum. Basically, Steve Rogers is back, in fighting form, completely restored. This really evens the playing field, and we now have two Captain Americas in their prime, fighting to stop the supervillains in Pleasant Hill. That whole matter gets cleaned up with the assistance of the Avengers, and that really spins out into the Captain America Steve Rogers series, which itself is really interesting. I think the most novel thing about the Captain America Steve Rogers run, and it's also what makes this run extremely polarizing in reviews from critics and fans alike, we basically find that Steve Rogers has been serving Hydra his whole life, and he's sort of a deep undercover agent of Hydra who's rising through the ranks of the superhero community and S.H.I.E.L.D. and all of these other things to eventually kind of promote Hydra and have them take over the country and the world. Uh, this is super polarizing, but we know as readers right from the jump that this is due, we think, because Red Skull has access to Kobik, this cosmic cube who can rewrite realities, and he, we believe, essentially rewrote Steve Rogers' whole life and destiny to have him basically be raised by Hydra with their ideologies, things like that. Uh, so a lot of the Steve Rogers Captain America run we see, there are a lot of flashbacks to Steve Rogers' youth, presumably showing the moments where Hydra intervened and how he was raised along this path to become the Hydra Captain America we know is undercover in the present day Marvel Universe. It's really grim and dark and honestly not the hopeful message I was hoping reading a Captain America book. I think because of that, Sam Wilson is really our captain in this series. The book starts with him. And particularly because we know Steve's allegiances to Hydra, really Sam Wilson is the hero of this book. We still have Steve Rogers here really adhering to his core beliefs. We have all of his willpower and heroics, but he believes he is doing the right thing in having Hydra uh, kind of reign supreme and doing everything he can to empower Hydra. The interesting wrinkle with that, though, is he's hoping for Hydra to reign without the Red Skull. He believes that uh, Red Skull is actually corrupting Hydra and he has to be eliminated uh, so that Hydra can be everything it's meant to be. So we actually have Steve Rogers teaming up with Helmut Zemo, Baron Zemo, one of his sworn enemies who now we have it where Steve believes this to be his best friend since childhood, raised together and only with him helping can they actually make Hydra a dominant force again. I think it's really interesting to read these Steve Rogers issues because we have Steve now uh, being a part of his greatest enemy of all time and it's really leading to a lot of interesting story arcs we have him kind of uh, incapacitating or almost murdering characters we have him being just really duplicitous and just really uh, kind of dark, like I said earlier, insidious. We question all his motives, all his actions, and even when he's giving these heroic speeches, everything is really marred by this core belief that we know he is so invested in Hydra, and his whole uh, ethics and frame of reference are really, really skewed. I think what's creepy is actually because it's not even that we're getting a 100% different Steve Rogers. We're getting a Steve Rogers that is so indoctrinated by Hydra that he has all of his same willpower and everything 
everything that makes up that character, but we have it just so infused with the Hydra belief system. And it's just really, really scary to read. I was really surprised at how effective that was. I know it's a really controversial story, and so many longtime fans really dislike it. I definitely agree why. I totally get it. You don't like seeing Captain America work for Hydra. I don't always love it either. It's like having bad Superman, you know, like in Justice. It's just hard to read, but I think it's easier to stomach knowing that somehow the Cosmic Cube is involved here. At least that's what's suggested in this first volume, uh, but still it's a little bit tough. It just makes me so happy that we have Sam Wilson, Captain America, who is still kind of a paragon, the best he can be to do what he does best. Outside of this, the plot also intertwines with the events of Marvel Civil War II. So we have some stuff before, during, and after Civil War II. Uh, so that definitely plays a role with these characters. I think this omnibus does a really good job of getting us an idea of what we've missed. So you can still feel like you're reading your own Captain America story. And it fills in the gaps of Civil War II as needed, I think, overall. I don't know that you have to have read Marvel Civil War II to enjoy this book. But this book will spoil a couple events of Marvel Civil War 2, so just as a heads up, if you were planning to read that, just be mindful that this does have things after the events of Civil War 2 that do spoil the events. Uh, I do think overall, though, it was really well done. Uh, the last issue in this book has to do with Civil War 2, The Oath, which has Steve Rogers kind of hovering over a... I guess comatose, almost dead Tony Stark in this chamber, uh, and Steve is basically uh, sharing his whole heart and his beliefs and just his criticisms of Tony Stark and the Avengers as a whole, and his allegiances with Hydra because presumably Tony Stark can't hear him. It's a really interesting kind of confessional issue, uh, heavy exposition, but just really character-driven and done well. Uh, it's it's just really interesting. The art for that issue is also gorgeous, and it leads us right to the doorstep of the Secret Empire arc, which I believe begins in Volume 2 of the Nick Spencer run. But overall, a really stunning conclusion that is a good turning-of-the-page chapter break in this whole saga, uh, but it does kind of wet my whistle, cliffhang me into the Volume 2 that I'm definitely interested in picking up eventually, whenever and if ever Marvel decides to release it. Uh, I think that outside of those main plots, I will say that the art throughout this is kind of fun. It wasn't my favorite art style for most of the book. There were some notable exceptions. I do think overall the art is very strong. It just maybe wasn't my particular flavor. In general, I did enjoy the art in the Sam Wilson issues. I think that those artists went for a kind of style that I didn't see in a lot of the Steve Rogers stuff. Uh, Steve Rogers stuff was still good. I did like the use of flashback sequences that, again, showed some of those Hydra origin linkings. A lot of the color palette they used for those flashback sequences were kind of a grayscale with splashes of red. Uh, there were some colors, but just really muted, and I just thought it was really interesting uh, just stylistically, again, we have a handful of artists on this book. It changed hands quite a bit. So visually, there is some just disjointedness issue to issue. Uh, but overall, I think that everything was done really well. I had a harder time uh, connecting with some of the more animated, cartoony styles. But thankfully, we didn't have that too much in this book. And again, it's not anything against the art as much as just my flavor. This wasn't the top of my list, maybe, in that front. I also think that there were some moments of just unevenness with the narrative quality of this book. I think overall, I really loved the Pleasant Hill storyline. I thought the Hydra stuff with Steve was interesting. And I liked character-wise everything we had with Sam Wilson, trying to live up to the Captain America ideal he has in his head and what it means for him to be Captain America. I think kind of having him sort of uh, up against all the odds with public opinion against him, it really had a palpable sense of conflict and character motivation that was so evident and really really well done really gripped by that but i think there were some arcs that just didn't really do it for me or just i had trouble kind of staying engaged i think with a captain america book it's not uncommon to have something that comes across a bit preachy or overly political of course it's a captain america book and especially a modern captain america book i think a little bit of that is to be expected but there were points in this omnibus where i felt it was a little bit tiresome i wanted to get going with the storylines and the action uh, rather than some of the messaging we got in the book. Uh, whether or not I agreed with some of the messaging, I just think the fact that there was so much of it in some issues, I felt a little bit like, let's move forward, let's get to the action, let's get to the sense of conflict. 
Um, so I think that that was something that maybe was a bit of a drawback with this book over some of the other Captain America runs I've read. Um, but overall, I still think it was a lot of fun. There were some great issues in this. Oh my gosh, one thing I didn't even mention, toward the beginning of the book, we have a return of Cap Wolf. That is the werewolf Captain America. Uh, this time with Sam Wilson kind of becoming this sort of werewolf. Uh, really interesting, there was a scene where the werewolf version of Sam Wilson, who is in the Captain America uniform with the shield, with falcon wings flying through the air, that I was like, wow, this is like a hat on a hat on a hat. At, a flying wolf falcon Captain America, uh, but it was really a ton of fun. There was a little bit of in humor there in an overall fairly serious story arc that I just think worked. I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, that Cap Wolf sort of story arc also has the uh, Sons of the Serpent or Serpent Solutions and the introduction of the new Falcon, Joaquin Torres. Uh, I think that was really well done. That was one of the earliest story arcs, like I mentioned. It was a ton of fun, and I think tonally one of the more lighthearted stories in this entire collection. Uh, that was another notable one. I just want to make sure I highlight because I think I went right over it in the beginning of this review. Uh, but overall, like I said, there were like stories like that and Pleasant Hill and some of these other ones that I really enjoyed. But there were moments where this collection just dipped or failed to keep my interest. Overall, I'm still really happy I read it. I think it was a good book. I would definitely read Volume 2. But it just didn't have that kind of earth-shaking quality that something like the Ed Brubaker run on Captain America did. Uh, overall, again, still a good book. I'm really interested to hear what more people think in this audience here. Right now, I've just heard reviews online of people being really polarized, particularly by the Hydra Steve Rogers whole angle to everything, but I haven't heard from a lot of people that have read it to just thoughtfully tell me what they thought of this book. I'd love to get more feedback. If you've read Nick Spencer's Captain America, what did you think? I know for me, like I said, I'm a little bit above middle of the road. I liked it, didn't love it. It was a little uneven for me, at least this volume one, but it was still enough that I enjoyed a lot of stories in this. I liked a lot of the character work. I saw, particularly with Sam Wilson. I thought that what they did with Steve was certainly captivating and something that kept me reading. And again, it's enough that I'm really excited to check out Volume 2 someday. Making our way to the back of the collection, though, we have a handful of extras in this omnibus, and that made me so happy. That was definitely a great positive for this collection. We have a really good array of variant covers in that cover art gallery at the back. We have some sketches, some notes, some different kind of behind-the-scenes images, resources, things like that. Always love seeing this, especially with an omnibus edition. I feel like we're getting a premiere format from Marvel, so when they load it up with extras, it just makes me extra happy. I know I even love seeing some of the uh, Scotty Young variant covers. They're, they almost come across like newspaper comics with little jokes. Really love seeing that. Love his kind of style. And that's really just one example of the incredible variant covers we have in the back in the gallery. Really, really good stuff. Way to go, Marvel, with all of these extras. It really helped pad out this collection, and it left me on a high note with this book. Really, really good stuff here. But really, that's going to bring us to the end of this Omnibus collection. I think all that's left to do now is to give Captain America by Nick Spencer, Volume 1, Omnibus, a grade. For giving us two Captain Americas for the price of one, the comic book report is happy to give Captain America by Nick Spencer Omnibus Volume 1 a B-. This was still a really fun read that lands somewhere just shy of a must-read status. I think if you're a longtime Captain America fan, you'll likely pick up this run, but I don't think a general comic book fan would have to read this book, especially to start. I would always point someone interested in Captain America, especially a modern Captain America, first toward the Ed Brubaker run, but this was still a really good read. I particularly like seeing what they did with Sam Wilson as Captain America. Definitely a high note for me, and I think the stuff that they tried to do with Steve Rogers, especially with the Hydra leanings and ideology, was definitely fascinating. There was enough here that I definitely want to check out the rest of Nick Spencer's run, but this is not my favorite chapter in the Captain America mythos. But let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you so much for watching The Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to leave a like, and maybe check out some of my other videos. Until next time, have a good one.